Hello and welcome to today's video everyone. Find the maximum value of the curve y equals x to the power 1 over x for all x greater than 0. Okay, so when you look at a question like this, it says to find the maximum value. So you know you're going to try to find the uh, turning point, see if it's maximum. So that involves finding first derivative setting equal to 0 and so on. It's, you might think this is a fairly simple problem. But then you look at this function here and you see, well, what kind of function is this? It's not your regular polynomial type function, x to the power of some constant, but then it's not your exponential type of function, where you have a constant to the power of some function of x. It's sort of a combination of both. So, how do we differentiate this? That becomes the problem. And the way we do it is we exploit a, bit, a little fact that we know about exponentials and logs being inverse functions of each other. So, if you have a number in general, a, you can write this number, a, as e to the power of log of a, because exponentials and logs undo each other. Okay, so, how are we going to apply this fact here to make it into a function that we're able to differentiate? Well, we can write x to the power of 1 over x, we can consider that as our a, and write it as y equals e to the power of log x to the power of 1 over x. Now, the reason we do this is because we know a property of logs. This power here can come down as the coefficient of the log. So we bring it down, and this is what we get. And so now we have e to the power of some function of x that we're able to differentiate. So, let's go ahead and find dy dx. Okay, so that's e to the power 1 over x times log of x. Okay, now times the derivative of the top part. So this is now just a chain rule application. So let's write it like this, so you can see explicitly what's happening. Okay. So, now we have this, we can rewrite it as x to the power 1 over x, because we don't need it in this form anymore. So let's put put it back in this form, and let's compute this derivative. Now, we can either do a quotient or a product rule. I'm going to do a product rule, because it's probably just easier to see. So we're going to have the derivative of the first one, well, the derivative of 1 over x, or x to the negative 1. When we differentiate that, we'll bring down the 1, the minus 1, and then it will be x to the negative 2, so divided by x squared, to, and then times in by this function, plus this function times the derivative of this function, so derivative of log x is 1 on x. You'll see that this is 1 over x squared, and here we have a 1 over x squared, so we can pull that out as a common factor, so divide by x squared, and then we'll have 1 minus log x. Okay. So now we need to set this equal to 0. So dy on dx equal to 0. What do we get? Well, when we solve this equal to 0, there's going to be no solutions from this part of the function. Because this is a has a power of, the power is related to x, so it can never be equal to 0. So the only thing that will make this equal to 0 will be this brackets here. So we're going to have 1 minus log of x equal to 0. And so therefore, that's log of x equal to 1. And therefore, x is equal to e. Okay, so we know that we have a stationary point at x equals e. Now we need to determine whether this is a maximum turning point, a minimum turning point, or it might not even be a turning point, it could be a point of inflection. But we need to uh, find that out. So how do we do that? Well, we can check the second derivative and solve that equal to zero, or we can see the change of sign in the first derivative. Now that is probably going to be the best method to do, because to find the second derivative of this expression here, it's going to be quite difficult. So we can Instead, check the change of sign in the first derivative. So, 
Let's just get some more paper. Okay. How are we going to check the change of sign? Well, we're substituting points that are a little bit less than E and a little bit greater than E and see what the sign of the first derivative is. So, when x is equal to E minus epsilon. Now, what does epsilon mean? Well, in calculus, epsilon means a very small positive value. So, we want to check just a little bit less than E. So, E minus epsilon. Then, dy on dx, what's that going to be? Is it going to be greater than 0 or less than 0? Well, this part of the function, this part of the derivative here, this is always greater than 0. This term here is always going to be greater than 0. So the only thing that's going to affect the sign is going to be the value here. Now, we know that log of e is 1. Now, anything less than e is going to give us a value less than 1 when we take the log of it. So we're going to have 1 minus something less than 1 in this case. So 1 minus something less than 1 will give us a positive value. And so therefore we're going to have dy dx being greater than 0. Okay, now at x equals e, we already know that we have dy on dx is equal to 0. Now what about a little bit above e? So remember, epsilon, just a small positive value. We're checking just a little bit above e. What do we get? Well, once again, this bit here is always going to be positive, so we're only checking in this part here. Now, when we substitute in a little bit greater than e, the log of something greater than e is going to be greater than 1. So we have 1 minus something that's greater than 1, so that's going to be negative. And so we have a positive times a negative, and therefore we have a negative derivative here. Okay. So, what can we say from, from this uh, change of sign now? Well, at a little bit less than E, it's increasing, and then it's zero, and then it's decreasing. So you can see that this here is a maximum turning point. So, therefore, there is a maximum turning point at x equals E. Okay, so if there's a maximum turning point at x equals e, then the maximum value of the curve will occur at the y value when x equals e. So, therefore, when x equals e, we have that y equals, and we just substitute it back into the original function. We just substitute x, uh, e for x in this function. So we're going to have y equals e to the power 1 over e. So therefore, the maximum value of the curve y equals x to the 1 on x is e to the power 1 on e. Okay, and that's your final answer. Thanks for watching.